When I was a kid, I remember hating seat belts. I mean, they were annoying. And to be honest, I always felt like I didn't really need them. One day, when I was in middle school, for some reason, the driver did not check if all the kids were in fact wearing their seat belts. And since I was a pretty rebel child, I decided I would not use mine. However, something unexpected happened. We were going down a hill, and while I was feeling all adventurous, the bus simply stopped. I barely felt anything but the pain of my body hitting against the floor. It was so fast and natural that it almost felt like I was floating in a frontward direction. No need telling that on that day, I started to reevaluate my beliefs about car safety. And I'm here today to test how important safety features such as seat belts and airbags actually are in case of severe crashes. To start off my research, I went online and tried to understand exactly what happened to me that day and how it could have been avoided. What I found out was the following. Imagine this box is me. While I was sitting in the school bus, feeling all adventurous, there were several forces acting on and against my body. Here, we can see gravity was pulling my body down, but because of this heat's normal force, I did not fall straight on the floor. This happens because the net force here is equal to zero. Basically, all external forces cancel each other out. My body was still, but the school bus was moving forward. Due to the unexpected break, I continued moving forward against air resistance, which was almost insignificant. That happened because of Newton's first law of motion, which states that Every object persists in its state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line, unless it is compelled to change that state by forces impressed on it. Which is what we normally take as a definition of inertia. I then hypothesized that if there were safety features such as an airbag in front of my seat, the accident would never have happened. Then, I tested the same situation on a 538 grams vehicle, with the nag representing the passenger. In that case, the maximum velocity was 1.77 meters per second. The egg did not get any noticeable scratches or anything that could suggest it had been damaged. However, in order to make a noticeable improvement, I would have to dig deeper. Therefore, my next step was to try and find out at what speed the egg would in fact be damaged by the impact. I found out that most car accidents occur at an average of 90 km per hour. But since we are dealing with a prototype that is way lighter, a conversion had to be made. Here we set the average weight of a popular car, which is around 1100 kg, equal to the velocity we are trying to get to. And here we're going to set the prototype's weight equal to x. Now notice that we have different units of measurement being used here. Therefore, we need to convert our kilograms to grams. Now, if we solve for x, we're going to obtain the velocity the prototype has to attain for the egg to be damaged. In order to actually test this, we need to discover what angle would give our prototype enough acceleration to attain 0.044 km per hour, since there is no way it can produce acceleration on its own. However, in reality, the calculations were a fail, since as you can see, the result was very small and there is no way a slower velocity is produced by a steeper angle. Therefore, I opted for a less theoretical method. I started by testing it all over again and gradually increasing the height where the rep was being placed. Ends up, we also had to decrease the distance between the collision and the rep, since that period would slow down the car, making it nearly impossible to break the egg. At 78 centimeters from the floor, with an angle of 30 degrees, the egg finally cracked. Since that was the last piece of information I needed, it was time to turn this into a real-life situation and start making improvements in our car. Therefore, I discovered what the prototype's maximum velocity was, guessing that had been its speed at collision time. 
Since meters per second isn't a very realistic unit of measurements for cars, I turned it into kilometers per hour, which gave me a final result of 136 kilometers per hour. Now it was time to finally start making some sample models of a safer car. I started by searching up the physics of airbags, which despite having pretty similar concepts to the ones we looked at previously, such as apply the normal forces, also includes the inertial force. Here it's being shown that if there is no more force applied against friction, there is a huge impact on the inside object, which in this case is us. This can also be shown in a more realistic manner, like this. Down here, we have the applied force produced by the car when trying to cancel the inertial force and prevent a stopping force, which would be the collision. Instead, what happens is a small collision between the person and the airbag. When the airbag is released, an applied force is generated to try and stop the inertial force. We can calculate the impact force by multiplying the acceleration of a body times its mass. That would give us a result in newtons. This generates an impulse in the body to change its momentum. However, we're going to be finding the applied force of the airbag by testing and focus less on the forces generated by the impact. My first test was with a cotton ball fixed on the front part of the car with tape. It didn't really work. My theory is that the stopping force created by the cotton ball was too small for the pressure created by the egg's impact. Therefore, no impulse was created. Then, I decided to test it with a sponge. Since the material is supposed to absorb, I guessed it would do a good job absorbing the impact force. I'm not sure if the theory behind it was right, but it did work. The egg was intact afterwards. But let's be honest, we don't go around driving with airbags being released all the time. And not all cars have airbags. Therefore, the most reasonable thing to do next was a safer seatbelt. According to CDC, the Center of Disease Control and Prevention, seatbelts dramatically reduce risk of death and serious injury. Among drivers and front seat passengers, seatbelts reduce the risk of death by 45% and cut the risk of serious injury by 50%. Therefore, my goal here was to create a seatbelt that could cut these risks down to at least 60%. How would I test that? Well, I suppose that this percentage refers to a car driving at an average speed of 90 km per hour, which is what we found out was the average speed cars are at during accidents. But here, we're testing for a car going at approximately 136 km per hour. Therefore, if it does work, it shows a higher level of safety. So for a car driving at 90 km per hour, it would predictably cut the risk of serious injuries by at least 60%. Now back to testing. First, I noticed that some of the safest seat belts are either those used in roller coasters, since they are made to resist a great amount of impulse, or those present in baby car seats, since they are programmed to protect very fragile bodies. So my objective was to kind of follow their design by making two thick straps with lots of support and enough elasticity to make it comfortable and still secure. Then I decided that I would do that with some elastic bands. Even though they're not as thick as I had anticipated, they do meet all of the other prerequisites. In the beginning, I tested in a car seat that was being tested by one of my classmates, but it didn't really work like I expected, and the egg kept breaking the elastics. So I designed a very simple seat that ends up could also absorb some of the impact caused by the changing motion when the passenger hits the airbag. It was just a sponge that was fixed on the car with some cotton balls on the side. Now back to the seat belts. I tried doing the same thing I was doing on the other seat on the new seats I just created and then just fixed the ends of the elastic to the back of the sponge. This time it did work. The egg-shaped straps distributed the force of the impact across the entire egg and securely reversed the inertia. It was also extra good during the stopping time, which is the period between the moment the car contacts the floor and the collision with the stopping force. However, on the second attempt, it did not work so well, being that during the stopping time, the egg slid off the seatbelt. Therefore, I decided to test both of the new features I had just created and see how secure it all was. Turns out, the result was pretty positive. 
and I finally had a model of a safer car.